I'm joined now by a conservative radio host, Mark Levin. He's the author of The Liberty Amendments, Restoring the American Republic, the author of the New York Times bestseller and host of the nationally syndicated Mark Levin Show. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Obviously, we had this uh, interview planned previously to talk about your book and to talk about the budget fight, but President Obama gave us some breaking news to talk about. What's your reaction to uh, news of this phone call? That's my reaction. Are you uh, what on? next? Just, the, uh, dictator just for the transcript. That runs, that, the dictator, well, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, the dictator North Korea going to call him next, and uh, we'll sit down with them and so forth. The fact of the matter is, did not this moderate say that uh, they're not changing policy with respect to their production of nuclear weapons? Didn't he say that? Well, so what are they talking about on the phone? I have no idea. I don't know what progress they're talking about. It's amazing to me. The irony is unbelievable. The president gets up there, he talks in very nice prose about, you know, this is the first time we're having this discussion. This is a regime that hangs gay people. This is a regime that kills American soldiers. This is a regime, as I speak, that's torturing freedom fighters in that country. Meanwhile, he talks about the Republicans as if they're holding hostages. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of his flunkies was on your show yesterday talking about them uh, having bombs attached to their chest, and I'm not going to talk to them. Now, the Iranians, sure, we're going to talk to them. This is a first. Boehner, no, no way I'm going to talk to them. Does he even understand how silly he looks? Well, that was one of the things that I no, noted. He doesn't. That was one of the things I noted is that Republicans have been very critical of the fact uh, uh, that President Obama uh, putting out stretch hands to talk about, to talk with uh, dictators, whether... Uh, it's uh, Bashar al-Assad or now Rouhani, uh, whereas there's a very strong criticism he's not doing enough to negotiate uh, with Congress. His position on the government shutdown is Congress cannot achieve unto itself, it doesn't have enough votes in the Senate to uh, get rid of Obamacare, uh, and therefore it's not fair nor democratic uh, to try to force a defunding of Obamacare through a government, th by threatening a government shutdown or by threatening not to raise uh, the debt ceiling uh, why is he wrong? Oh, I see. So the only Congress that was democratic was the one that passed Obamacare. So we're stuck with it forever. And I understand when he was a senator and he voted against increasing the debt ceiling, that was not going to throw the economy into hell. No, 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 no. And now as President of the United States, he's talking about a government shutdown. We have to pay our bills. Does he even understand how this works? You're paying existing interest, principal, and pensions existing, not prospective. We've taken $200 billion a year that covers all that and more. He doesn't want to negotiate because he doesn't want to talk about that. That's perfectly fine. Now, we've shut down the federal government 17 times in 19 years. I've got it right here. It's NBC, so it must be true. From 1976 to 1995, people got their checks. The military didn't go home. The border was as secure as it was then, as it is now. So all these scare tactics mean nothing. And I just want to inform some of the folks there at CNN, the Tea Party is not, you know, like the reptile house at the zoo, this tiny group of people. It is people who are concerned about $17 trillion in debt, uh, $90 trillion in unfunded liabilities. This president has added enormously to this. So it's kind of ironic that he's talking about paying our bills and, and the debt and so forth when he's accumulated so much of it. Well, without question, there's a lot of people who are concerned about the debt and, and the Tea Party caucus and Tea Party uh, patriots, the groups uh, throughout the country. So what's he going to do about it? Well, here's my question. is if, Why is President Obama the only one responsible for the deficit if Congress uh, is not able, both the House and the Senate, uh, to pass a budget that starts to bring the United States within its means? That's an excellent point, and you're exactly right, which is the reason <laughs> I wrote this book. But he talked today about the budget. The person who's stopping the passage of an annual budget is Harry Reid. Harry Reid's working with the White House. The House, as I understand it, keeps passing budgets, sending them to the Senate, and they die. So I don't know what he's talking about. We need to have a budget every year. Okay, then tell your friend Harry to get a budget. You do control the Senate. You do control the White House. There are still some Democrats left in the House, and there's some French Republicans left in the House who What's will go French? along with you. I wanted to ask but you that. It, what, is a, what exactly yeah. is a French Republican? A French Republican is a Republican who beats up on conservatives and is constantly praising the Democrats and contributing to the massive spending in this country while they go home and pretend otherwise. Okay. 
Why France? Just because of Vichy France, or is there? Is I, I could have said worse. Yeah, exactly. I could have said worse, but French seemed fine to me. So let me just ask you a question about uh, not so much uh, the government shutdown, which which might happen uh, come midnight Monday, as Monday becomes Tuesday. Uh, but the, but the. But debt Jay, can I ask you something? Sure. Can I ask you something? Of course. What happens when the government shuts down? What, what happens? What happens when the government shuts down? B various government agencies. Uh, tell non-essential personnel, it's a specific label. Uh, uh, yeah, not... and I, I was in the Reagan administration right. when we shut down the government, I think it was six times, yes. and essential personnel make up like 40 or 50 percent of the personnel in the bureaucracy. So I just want people who watch CNN to understand it's, it's not like Saturday and Sunday when the government really shuts down and there's nobody in the offices or a government paid holiday when nobody's in the offices. There's actually people in the offices, the military doesn't go home, the border patrol doesn't go home, the ships don't go into dock. I just want them to understand the social security checks are still cut. We're talking about the rest of the government. Point, point taken, sir. I want to talk about the debt ceiling, though, because as you know, uh, the debt ceiling is whether or not we pay the bills that have already be, been incurred. Uh, this is the spending that has already taken place that the House, the Senate, President Obama have already uh, allowed to happen. And not raising the debt ceiling, as you know, can cause serious harm to the American economy uh, for a number of reasons. Why is it fair for the Republicans, the House Republicans, to use the debt ceiling? Uh, I'm, not, I'm gonna try to avoid using any of the, uh, the metaphors that, that offend uh, people, but why is it fair to use that as a bargaining chip when it's not their economy, it is all of our economy, it is the United States economy. Because we live in what's called a constitutional republic and it's interesting under Article 1, spending, taxing, borrowing has to come from the House of Representatives first. Maybe the President doesn't understand that. So if he's really concerned about a government shutdown, he's really concerned about the debt, he would have spent the last five years trying to figure out how to work with Republicans, but he doesn't. And so we have, for instance, Obamacare. And what does he do? He decides who gets waivers. He decides who benefits. He decides what he's going to uh, extend and not extend. That's not the way our republic works. So he should pretend, I guess, that John Boehner's the president of Iran, maybe get a phone call, maybe they could tweet each other, and maybe have a discussion about the constitutional responsibilities of both. But Obama, when it comes to domestic policies, it's his way or the highway. When it comes to foreign policy, he's quite the appeaser. As you know, President Obama argues, and this is, this is me relaying his view, uh, that he wants right. to negotiate with uh, the Republicans in Congress, uh, but they refuse to talk about tax increases, which he wants to be on the table, along with other things such as uh, entitlement reforms and spending cuts. And he says, because they're not willing to negotiate, uh, they're, they're the ones who are saying my way or the highway. Your, your response to that? Okay, great. My, my, my response to this is this whole federal system is completely out of control. The trajectory is one way. When you have a nation that has $90 trillion in unfunded liabilities and not enough money in the planet to pay for that, and you have $17 trillion debt, and the executive branch is not serious about talking about it, the Senate is obstructing whatever the House does, and even the House isn't serious about it. Both political parties, to one extent or another, are involved in this. The problem is we, the American people, have to deal with this. We have the General Accountability Office, part of the federal government, that says this is unsustainable. We have the Congressional Budget Office that says this is unsustainable. We have the trustees and actuaries for Social Security and Medicare saying this is unsustainable. And these guys are fighting over, well, I'm not going to talk to this one about whether we keep the government open or not. Let me tell you something. At some point, in some day, in some way, these people are saying it's unsustainable. It is unsustainable, and it's going to crash one day.